today I'm reviewing the Egyptian Magic All Natural Cream. And really quick, I just want to say I purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsbeauty.com. Check out my Patreon community or click on the Amazon link below. Okay, I can't believe I've been doing reviews for four years and I haven't reviewed this one yet. Although I get asked about it quite often. So I finally did the review. Wrote it up, got it all done. Okay, so I'm just going to get down to it right off the bat. Okay, the called the Egyptian Magic All-Purpose Skin Cream, The People's Choice. It's a phenomenal healing balm with legendary powers. Due to its unique mixture of all-natural ingredients derived only from living plants and organisms, Egyptian Magic All-Purpose Skin Cream has been on the market since August of 1991 with a solid track record, a loyal word of mouth following, and twice the healing power for half the price of conventional skin creams. Our mission is to continually provide a powerful skincare product with multiple purposes to treat and nurture skin with nature's most effective healing ingredients so our clients can feel and look beautiful using a 100% natural product. With this unique formula, Egyptian Magic Skin Cream contains no additives, added preservatives, parabens, or GMO ingredients. Instead, we utilize the natural preservatives found in our ingredients and are able to provide an effective healing balm. Uh, just because something's all natural doesn't necessarily mean it's better than something that's not natural. Just I just want to say that right off the bat. There's nothing wrong with using all natural things, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's better than something that isn't natural. So anyway, just want to say that. So let me get down to the review. Okay, so my first criteria is packaging, and unfortunately... Instead of using a squeeze tube or a pump bottle or something else or an Aeros jar, they decided to use just a traditional jar. And unfortunately, royal jelly and propolis and honey are very sensitive to breaking down in the presence of light and air, especially with the repeated presence. So in my opinion, this would have been much better packaged in a squeeze tube or Aeros jar or something else. Although, what are you going to do? But just keep that in mind. Every time you open it, it's exposed to light and air more and more, and it degrades. So if you open it up, you want to finish it as soon after you open it up. Okay, in terms of denatured or drying types of alcohol, this doesn't have any of that. So that's always a good thing. And then we get to fragrance. There's no fragrance and no noticeable scent. There's only six ingredients in it, which sometimes is great for people. Okay, so the manufacturing location for this one, it's made in the U.S., ironically, even though it's called Egyptian Magic. Uh, I guess it follows a long list of products, such as Australian Gold, which is made in the U.S. and not even sold in Australia. Vizard Paris, the eyeshadow brand, Skin Iceland, uh, Ciate London, Sold de Janeiro, Tokyo Milk, etc. I don't know. I could have went on, but I, when I had like 10 examples of it, I'm like, that's good enough. I don't know. I guess it's branding. I guess... It's Egyptian magic. I, I think the founder of the brand was e from Egypt, so I guess that's something. But I wonder if this is sold in Egypt. That would be interesting to know. Anyone from Egypt, is it sold there? Leave a comment. I'm dying to know. Okay, so ease of use. Let me find. I have a little, a little thingy here. My little spatula. Don't leave home without it. So it's very easy to use. Um, really just dig in and smooth it into skin and apply it wherever your skin feels irritated or dry. However, I've been able to use it on a lot of places. However, my neck, which is very sensitive, did not like this at all. I ended up having to rinse it all off and start over. So uh, it's a healing balm, but very, very sensitive areas apparently might not like it. I guess it just depends on how your skin reacts to the six ingredients. But otherwise, you can pretty much apply it anywhere. So that's very nice. Uh, like I'll just apply it on dry patch on my arms, and it really does a good job there. Uh, my face, I tended to use it more on my eye area, which it didn't have any issues with, but my neck hated it. So very easy to use. It does have a bit of an occlusive f feeling to it, so it kind of locks in moisture which is can be good for skin um so egyptian magic this is from their website is one jar that contains a face cream and eye gel a hair mask burn and wound relief oh i should put on my burn i had a little burn yesterday from 
pulling something out of the oven. And I, I should have tried this last night, but I didn't think of it. Anyway, wound relief, a baby cream, a shaving balm, and anything else you can think of. We've even heard from veterinarians who use it on horses after surgery. Because Egyptian magic is a solidified oil-based product, you'll see the best results if you soften it by warming up before applying it. Take a small amount, rub it in your hands until it softens and turns into an oil, and then apply it to your skin. A little Egyptian magic goes a long way, which is very true. Um, if you're applying it to your hair, warm it up and then gently rub it into the ends of your hair. You can also apply it to your hair and scalp as a hair mask. Just let it sit for an hour or more and then wash out with shampoo. Dab it on your face to highlight your cheekbones or natural glow. I don't know. There's a lot of those products that are like highlighting gels that are just clear gels. I, I have some, but I haven't tried them, but I don't know. I just think that it might feel gooey. And then anytime your hair blows, it gets stuck like lip gloss. I don't know. Um, okay, so you can apply it under your eyes to help with dark circles and dehydrated tissue. Gently apply over wet skin after shower bath for all over hydration. Uh, takes a while to absorb, but it works similar to almost any other salve or balm you might use. So very easy to use, a lot of different uses. If you have an interesting use, let me know. But I'm going to see how that does on my little burn, which is blistering, and then it, it kind of stopped, so... There's nothing like the pain from a burn. That That is an instant pain. So, I don't know. Okay. So, then we get to antioxidants and beneficial ingredients. Only six ingredients in the whole thing. Um, honey, beeswax, olive oil, royal jelly, bee pollen, and bee propolis. Honey is great for skin because of the amino acids and peptides with the antioxidant and antibacterial effects. It has also the ability to soothe, protect, and help wounds heal. Then we've got beeswax, which is a very emollient ingredient. Very, very emollient. Kind of gives it that uh, texture that kind of feels occlusive. Then we've got olive oil, which because of the olive oil, if you have very, very acne-prone skin, probably wouldn't recommend applying it to your face. But olive oil is a fatty ingredient, which also contains squalane, essential fatty acids, such as oleic and palmitic and linolylic acids. Um, it also contains phenolylic compounds, which are antioxidants. So olive oil is great for skin unless you're very acne prone. So just be a little bit cautious with it. Then we get to royal jelly extract. It's a hydrating water binding ingredient that contains some minerals and vitamins. I'm not super into that ingredient per se, but beeswax, honey, and olive oil I am. Royal jelly, I just... Other than a little bit of hydration from it, I've never noticed anything other benefits from it. Then we get to bee pollen, which can be an antioxidant that contains, uh, or wait, it can be an antioxidant, but many people can have reactions from that ingredient, especially when used in large amounts. Uh, so if you're allergic to bees, I'd probably stay away from this. Does it say anywhere on here, after a bee sting, apply? I don't know. But if you're allergic to bees, I probably wouldn't use it. Um, yeah, so the bee pollen, I have a feeling that's probably why my neck didn't like this one so much. Because all the other ingredients on here and any other product, my skin would love it. Especially my neck. But Then we get to propolis. I love propolis. It's extremely skin soothing. Also has antioxidant and antibacterial functions. Um, there's always a bit of a toss-up with products that have short ingredient lists. Sometimes for those who are very sensitive to ingredients very sensitive skin or have allergies to a lot of ingredients, a short ingredient list can be great. Although your skin needs so much more than just six different ingredients, your skin needs hundreds of different things to really feel healthy, look healthy, and be healthy. So this isn't the end all be all, but uh, you can certainly use it in your routine as maybe a last step to see all other products in or just hydration from time to time or on dry flaky areas. So I don't know. Sometimes I can be a bit harsh on ingredients that have short ingredient lists because your skin needs so much more. But then overall, with products, when they have a hundred different ingredients, you're really not getting much of them anyway. So it's kind of a toss-up. So this one, the ingredient list is uh, okay. I maybe would have changed a couple things here and there, but I guess it's been around for 30 years, so 1991. So it's been around for a long time. Okay, then we get to animal testing. And the Egyptian magic is cruelty-free, but not vegan, obviously, from the bee ingredients. 
Uh, then we get to performance, and it really does a nice job hydrating skin as well as protecting it. Uh, I tend to use this more on dry patches on my body, like my arms sometimes in the winter will get dry, and just a little bit of it does the whole trick, which is nice. Um, I don't like to use it so much on my face just because I find it kind of suffocating and sometimes pore clogging, and then obviously my neck did not appreciate it, but dry patches on my body, especially like on my ankles, they can get dry, and it works well there. Um, so very nice. I do recommend highly doing a patch test just because of the B ingredients. So do a patch test before you apply it, especially if you're going to use it on your face. Patch test will do a lot of good there. Okay, then we get to price, and this is the two-ounce jar. I want to double-check. Where does it say? Yes, the two-ounce jar, which is also 59 milliliters. Uh, so this retails about $26. So it's for what you get, it's both affordable and kind of pricey at the same time, if you know what I mean. For six ingredients that are relatively cheap ingredients, it's a little pricey. But overall, for a two-ounce jar of salve, it's not pricey. So, I don't know if I confused you there, but it's both hit and miss. But overall, it's still relatively affordable compared to even some other drugstore products. Then we get to the It Factor, and it, it does a decent job with dry patches. Although, it's kind of just a bit pricier version of Vaseline with some minerals and vitamins thrown in, I guess. Um... The ingredient list is great for sensitive skin, probably not so much acne-prone skin, but the jar packaging is the biggest disappointment by far because the second you open it, that uh, propolis and honey, and uh, it starts to degrade pretty quickly. So, um, so overall, I did not give it the it factor point. If they would have packaged it in a tube, I'd have been much more all about this. So, kind of a toss-up, but... Anyway, so out of 10, I gave this one a 7, which is still pretty good. And I know a lot of people absolutely love it. So I lo want to hear from you guys why you love it and what you use it for. So uh, leave a comment. I love hearing from you. And stay tuned for more tomorrow. I'm going to keep using this on my burn, by the way. So anyway, thank you so much.